Slurpcast! Part two of game types, our favorite games, pros and cons, all this kind of stuff. If you saw the first one, awesome. If you haven't, you could watch this one. A lot of sequels are better than the first. Just saying. We'll find out if this one is. We've got Extreme. We've got Beer and We've got Valdrick. They're um, somewhere in these, you know, in the vicinity. One of the three is diagonal for me. And the other two are orthogonal. Two are oral for me. What is the word? Oral? Orthogonal. Orthogonal. Thoughts. And three of them are thoughts for the kids out there that know what that is. Um, so in our previous episode, we covered skirmish games, card games, collectible card games, dice games. We are going to start with uh, one that I don't think Baron is a huge fan of. Let's talk about party games. The games that, sure, card games can be party games, but I'm talking about Games for the sole purpose of getting a ha, getting a couple of laughs from the buddies. Usually people are drinking, having fun. You know, in the case of uh, Mike and Katie, maybe trying some harder stuff, you know? Not Mike. No? I was driving. I, see, I thought you were called Mike and Molly, like the TV show, but it was you <laughs> with, with a pocket full of pills. <laughs> You're like, here's my test tubes. Want to see what I can make? I'm like, Mike, keep it at the fucking office, please. Party games. Are there any good ones? No. Yes. Uh, no, I have a great one. I what? have one too. Thank you, Extreme. Camel Up. I think oh. is a Camel Up. Oh. Or Camel Cup, depending on how you want to say it. It's Camel Up. I think it's been clarified that it's Camel Up. It was in the but FAQ. The, is that good? The font is a little confusing, but I think it's Camel Up. Such a cool game, so fun. It's a party game. It, you can get non-gamers into it. There's some strategy, so it's not all luck-based, and no one's really ever behind or ahead. Super fun game. Okay. I've heard nothing but good things about it, but I've never right. played that. Um, you know, the the beauty of a party game is yes, anyone can play it. Usually, there's very simple rules, or you make them up as you go along, but. You know, and we're going to, when we get to board games, we're going to talk about what I always find is finding like fun people to play a game with. If you're playing a board game that needs four people, you want to find the right people. These party games, nobody gives a fuck. You can be anybody, you know? So as much as people like to shit on Cards Against Humanity, it's the only place I got to hear my mother-in-law say, what is a queef? And we all laughed because she said, what is a queef? Because that was one of their cards. Uh, she had to use that. So I didn't want to tell her. It's not my place. Um, but the only one I really like playing, and we, I brought it to Adepticon before, is Joking Hazard. It's pretty fun. Um, you have a little comic strip, three things. Um, there's a card in there. Extreme, what's your favorite card in that game? <laughs> Eat My AIDS. Eat My AIDS. The little shitty drawing, the guy has a dick out of blood all over. It's great. Um, so I think for that, it's, it's a fun game for that side of it. It's almost like I don't want to play Cards Against Humanity. I think I'm better than that. I'm funnier than that, but this game, but not really. But not, but not really. <laughs> the hardest part of this game is making sure that the, the text goes with the right person. Because sometimes it's like, oh, the great punchline. No, blue guy isn't saying that, though. Green guy said that. That's the hardest part of the game. Uh, Biron, do you have any? No. <laughs> and, and Valdrick? I, I hate Cards Against Humanity. I hate Apples to Apples. Yeah. Uh, I did play this one once, and I don't remember. I think it was called Bullshit or something. I don't know. You put a bunch of phrases in a hat. Bullshit sounds familiar. And then you have to, you basically go through it three times. I don't remember. What, but, you know, it's, it's one of those fun things because, you know, you can, like, some of the phrases on there are, like, whatever you put in there so it's you know like lick my love pump and then you got to get your grandmother to say lick my love pump and you know that's always fun but you ever uh, play porno password with your grandma oh yeah that's great <laughs> oh no she's always the one that taught me all the the words for the different you know neighbors and whatnot so yeah things you can't say yeah 
Shreem, what were you doing? The cable guy, the porno password. The password is. It's like nipple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll move on. That's party games. Pros and cons. The con is they're usually dumb. The pro is anybody can play even if you're fucked up. Right? They are or, the no. uh, bejeweled or candy crush of gaming. Fair. Fair enough. Um, let's go sports. That is fair, but Camel Up is a good game. Okay. What's your scene almost, like? Though? It's almost like an expression, like Camel's Up. Like it's like a thing. It Let me see be. Camel's Up. Uh, let's talk about sports games. We, we're wearing sports gear today. We're talking about sports games. Uh, this is a weird category. because It's not a category of game, uh, of type of game. It's not a mechanic. It's more of a theme. Most games have certain themes, but because of the history this show has had covering Blood Bowl, Blitz Bowl, Dread Bowl, Techno Bowl, and maybe one day Guild Bowl, maybe Battle Bowl, if we're all so lucky, I don't know. Maybe Elf Extreme. Uh, last sure. week was your birthday episode. It's not anymore, so nobody gives a fuck, but you have a game <laughs> called Elf. Elven League Football. Now, true or false? Bill, Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. Yeah, that's a good one. Speedball was good too on Genesis. And also the Amiga. Um, did you steal the rules from uh, what was the pizza? Uh, Elf, Elf ball? ball. No. Many people think Elf was stolen from Elf Ball. Many people are wrong. It's more of a blending of Dread Ball and Blood Bowl Sevens. Mm -hmm. Bread Ball. Yeah. Bread Bread Ball Seven. That's sure. Uh, no one makes games out of bread anymore. Anyway. Uh, so, Extreme, you picked Blood Bowl as your favorite skirmish game. I did. We let you do it because it was your birthday last week, but... Nope. No more of that bullshit today. Blood Bowl... It's not my favorite sports game. Oh. Well, do tell. <laughs> I, I know. Shocking, right? Because I said I was going to mention it in multiple categories. Uh, my favorite sports game is Stratomatic Baseball. Mmm. A classic. Stratomatic is a classic. It's um, probably the most in-depth simulation game from eras that predate me. Um, but it is so awesome. Like, all the like, stats from is it, is it so old that there's no black players? No. Don't go there. That's not fair. Um. <laughs> you said it was an old baseball game. No, he, he means uh, like... Mean, no, is it so old that it was made in black and white? Yeah. It was, it was the first game that I ever saw that had a polyhedral that wasn't six-sided. How about that? It's the first time I saw a game that came with a die that had more than six sides. What comes with it? A D20. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, so it's super cool. It, like, every card for the player is based on their stats for that season. So the odds of them getting different hits are based on what they actually did that year. So it's really cool. So I went back and ordered like uh, the 1987 Cubs. So I have the Andre Dawson card um, and stuff like that. And they have like Hall of Fame packs that you could buy. Uh, the problem is finding people under the age of 65 to play with. Mm. Yeah, that's not one that's going to – your local game store or – your local I can see it at Games Plus, though. There's a lot of over 65s there. Would you say, though, that – They have to be over 65 and baseball fans and be willing to put up with you. Like, it, there's a lot of hurdles there, but it is a really cool simulation. Could it be a hipster game? Guy, guy that's 27 plays it because no one else plays it? Maybe. Uh, like, if the if, – I mean, it is definitely a simulation game. Like, it, it takes into, like, ballpark effects and weather. Like, everything is into it yeah. once you get into the advanced games. So, you have to be really into baseball. But Like, yeah, even definitely. weird stadium stuff, like, was it Houston with that hump? Uh, was it McCovey's Hill or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you bounced I, off that. I rolled at seven. Can you play by, <laughs> play by email extreme? Uh, they had an online version, which I thought was weird, but I don't think it was by email. I think it was like online. So it was apparently. via Prodigy. Oh, nice. Probably. Yeah. Is um, it got current teams, or is it at? Is there a cutoff of years? Where yeah, they don't no, it, it's still coming out every year. So there's definitely current teams, and they still sell like the Hall of Fame years. But it's still kind of weird. You still have to like 
I don't know, it's still old school. So you had to kind of send your address and I think they accept personal checks and then they mail you the stuff. <laughs> Then it weird you have to send him a self-addressed stamped envelope. It, it, feel, it feels like it, but yeah. So the other prob the problem I have with game two is organization. So it comes in like the very thin, like monopoly sized game yeah, box. Yeah. But then once you start adding a bunch of game, uh, like a bunch of team packs to it, it doesn't fit anymore. So like mine like sticks up like three inches over. So I have like rubber bands. It's all bowed out. Boxes. You need like a you need a box like beer on last week. Yeah. I don't know if he still right. has that near him. It was a whole week ago, so he probably doesn't have it anywhere near him. No. I need, I need my beer Ron card catalog. That's right. <laughs> um, so I'm fascinated by it. Was this, is this type of game that you could still get if there was like a service merchandise? <laughs> yes. You would <laughs> fill out your little card and they would send it down the rollers? I, like yeah. I actually picked up a copy at Gaming Go. Wow. Hey. I think I remember when you bought that. Yeah, it was $1.99. Wow, that is a great deal, actually. And um, they don't take checks there, only cash. But if you play just the basic version of the game, it's actually very easy to get people into. But then, like, the advanced stuff, like, as soon as you start getting into that, like, whoa, you dove deep into the simulation at that point. Too much. I played a game, um, I think it was called Head on Baseball. It was um, a box, like, about this big because it had a tape, a cassette tape inside. That you, I remember that. Yeah. Remember that? So if you're pitching to me, so you're the pitcher on the batter, you we had a card like the like the size like a, almost like a bingo card, and it was in nine squares. It was all red. You had to slide into a thing to decode yeah. it. It's like, so like the tra transformer tra stats thing. on the back <laughs> of the box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had to guess if I guessed which of the nine spots you're pitching in, the likelihood I was gonna get a good hit was really high. I think it was called head on baseball, all generic, no real players. Um, I remember playing could that. You, with, could you have a guy in the crowd that would bang on a garbage can to help give you a hint? <laughs> Which you know, yeah, there wasn't a cheater add-on pack, but if it was now, there would be. Yeah, but it was it was play pure in the '80s. You know, like steroids were don't ask, don't tell. Right. You know? No one took steroids because they didn't test. You can't prove it. That's right. That's true. Barry Bonds still the greatest ever. I keep saying it. Uh, extreme. Anything else on Stratomatic? Uh, no, I think that's it. If okay. anyone wants to play Stratomatic with me, come over to my house. We'll play. It'll be awesome. We'll put if his I address in the description below. Yeah, it's, <laughs> he lives on Lois Lane, everybody. Um, if you Google Zerpy Bowl, you're going to find it on a fucking old PDF anyway. Um, Extreme, if I go to your house, that's the last game we're going to play. <laughs> no offense. Probably. You're going to play I mean, Mall Madness first. Of course, with, with zombies too. Uh, Zombie Mall Madness. Yeah. Do you have a favorite um, sports game? Uh, me? Yeah. God, I hate I hate to say it. I would say Blitzball, but I don't think that counts as a sports game. Why? It feels more – it's not sport? trying to simulate any sport I know. It's more of an objective-based tactics game. I, I would disagree. It is. Uh, if it, it was my birthday, I would say it's a sports game, but it's not. <laughs> Not your birthday. I, I would say it's more like the um, NFL Combine. So, yes, it is a sports I, game. I think there's no question it's a sports game. It's a sports board game. And it's, it's, trying, it's got cool models, but it's trying to emulate training camps of sorts, uh, of sports. I, so, I would, go, I would go – I'm going to make two picks. It's going to be Blitzball then yeah. and Dreadball. Okay. It, it, hate, it pains me to give a Mantic game the nod, but it's – it's good. It's a good game. Yeah. It's a, it is a good game. You know, we don't, there's a lot of games like that are based off of football. Baseball has a good amount of board games too. Um, I mean, is there any, are there any basketball straight up based board games? I know someone listening is like, Oh, don't you know about slam dunk 55? Like, I don't know about fucking that. Whatever. Like, but I, like yeah. baseball has a bunch like bottom of the ninth, 2045 that one um bottom of the ninth is good but. yeah by the way. extreme did you ever play and this wasn't really a game game but it looked like one so when i was collecting baseball cards it was probably like maybe i don't know like 90 baseball classic from the classic baseball cards yes the trivia oh. game yeah so With the full field in the center it was a, yeah it wasn't no, but it wasn't no. even like a game game like we I mean, it came in a box, 
like a it, game, the cl classic baseball. You got like Ken Griffey Jr. card in the box there. Um, but you I don't know how I describe that game. It's trivial pursuit for idiots that like baseball. Hmm. Because it was dumbed down yeah. trivia, all baseball specific, but you still had to use the trivia. But then you get a question right, and then you advance on the basis. Yeah, it was it was a stupid game. Yeah, the cards was, were definitely a selling point. The only reason to get the game was to get the cards uh, because yeah. you wanted another brand of cards. But um, yeah, so there's other thematic games. But so Biron Dreadball kind of emulates. Is it basketball? I'd Most say it's closest to basketball. Yeah. I'd say hockey. So. I say whirly ball. Well, yeah, but there's no cars. Do you guys know how it, how it was created? It was Whirly Ball, wasn't it? It was. So yeah. Pat Lewis took Ronnie from Mantic to Whirly Ball, probably Vernon Hills or uh, yeah. the other one was Lombard, I think. And yeah, jolly good time, Patrick. I don't know if that's what he said. And then Dread Ball was created. And so sci-fi, to me, it's very basketball-like. I know you're not... You know, it, it's different, but if you had to pick one, whirly ball's not a real sport, sorry. Um, but it's closest to that, in my opinion. But I think uh, I'm surprised you picked it, Biron. I, I won a trophy for it, so I got to give it some props. <laughs> what did you give it, Slurpee-wise? Do you remember? 2.5. Okay. Again, sports is not my favorite genre, so. Yeah. You got a Walter Payton jersey on. I thought, you, thought you were more into it. I have a lot of jerseys, and I don't even watch football anymore. Um, would you buy, side note, a basketball Black Lives Matter jersey? No. Okay. Uh, Mike, Valdry. Because I'd have to shave my shoulders. That's why I don't wear basketball jerseys. Oh, you don't want to be a shirt under the jersey guy? It, look, it, it seems like a cop-out, like a fat kid wearing a shirt at the pool. But players do that now, though. Is it because they have hairy shoulders like me? No, they just think it looks cool, like a black shirt. I, have, I do have one uh, basketball jersey. It's Orlando Magic. I got it in Disney because they had a Disney. Because Disney, because they're 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 freaking poorhouse now. They have to put corporate sponsors on their jerseys. Was it a, was it a Scott Skiles jersey? Uh, Gordon <laughs> is his last name. Double zero. I don't know Gordon. No, I didn't okay. either. But I thought it looked cool. <laughs> I think baseball jerseys are a little more classy because of the buttons. Yeah, I feel like I'm at work. No, baseball I, I jerseys are cool. like you wear a football jersey, your guy wearing football jersey. But if you wear a baseball jersey, you're like, all right, he tried a little bit. He dressed up a little bit. I have <laughs> an authentic White Sox jersey. Um, I forgot what player it was, but it's a black one. I like their Would black. You say jersey. collecting baseball jerseys is something you get into. Yeah. Like. I've got a retro Padres jersey. Well, it's because you need probably – how many alternates do some teams have? Well, I mean, even just the different styles. People buy old ones all the time. Yeah, but even like of a current year, the, some teams have so many alternates. Yeah. It's crazy. True. Um, Valdrick, what is your favorite sports tabletop game? Uh, well, Blood Bowl will always – Yeah. You can say it. It's a safe place. But if I'm actually just going to – it would either be Techno Bowl or Dread Bowl. Yeah. Both of those are ones that I – Wish I could play more. Yeah. We but covered I played enough. I, I We've covered them in their own episodes. So look those up. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Techno, Bowl, Techno Bowl by far is mine. It's, it's so fucking good. If, you're like, if you like football, it's, it's so good. It's the one of all the ones we've listed that feels most like the sport. It's yeah, ready. for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. Um, let's talk about board games. Biron's favorite topic. Um, I know there's like American style, European. I, I don't really care about that breakdown ameritrash is it is what no, they call it no it's euro trash and americool or whatever is what right. i call it. um to me there's two types and i know there's again you can disagree people probably do but there's either like miniatures it's part of the game or it's not i know there's a billion other things oh, there's resource management there i know i don't really care about all for the for our purposes you know what kind of show we do we talk about miniature games for the most part so um i'd like to break that one down for you guys so let's do a uh, a board game that has miniatures first mm -hmm. um who wants to go first Biron? you have one no no don't make me go first i gotta think right, i'll go um extreme okay. blood bowl <laughs> it's not your board. birthday that's miniatures blood bowl that's fine yeah, 
It really is. You can you can totally pick that, um, but you're not going to get to talk about it. That's that's the <laughs> All right. That's fair. Uh, mine is uh, Warhammer Underworlds. We can cover it in an episode. It's it's a board game, mm-hmm. and there's miniatures, and look great, and there's no negative to it. So watch that episode if you uh, disagree with me. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, then, yeah. Ciao. We'll do uh, pianos. What? Pian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, Valdrick, what's your favorite board game with miniatures? Uh, Last Night on Earth. It's uh, Last Night on Earth. It's uh, Flying Frog Games. Uh, It's a zombie where one player or one team plays the zombies. The other player plays the survivalists. Uh, I play with Katie. It's very well balanced. I think we've kept track of all the games we've played, and we are dead even. So like like thirty games in, she's one fifteen, I've one fifteen. So it's very balanced. Uh, it's always, it's one of those ones like like turn three, you think you have lost it, and then turn six, it's, you can, it's anyone's game at the end. So I think it's really well done. Nice. It works well as a two player game. Yes, it works very well as a two player game. And then if you get more players, usually the the survive the humans. You, you split those up, and then one player plays the zombies. And so, okay. so if you're the person that knows how to play, you can play the zombies. And there's a there's a lot of games out there now, especially like um, like Fantasy Flight, Cool Men are not because their models are getting better and better. Oh God, yes. You know? So if you play those kind of games, like you know, like Blood Rage, they, Blood they're, Rage, they're, yeah, they're, they're they're cool games. They're fun games. I probably I'll put that up there. You know, it's it would be a top five. Um, good models. Not like crazy good models, but pretty damn good models. Um, that people are coming out with those. You know, Rivet Wars is a fun game too. You know, uh, Aaron, do you have one now? Yeah, I would go with Riot Quest. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say Riot Quest is also. I, yeah, I, I didn't know that. One of those games game. where it's so back and forth, you never know who's going to win. That's, um, that's models board, look great. It's a board game. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. yeah, it's on a hex as opposed to a grid, but it's you're just counting squares mm. can i play out of the box or do i have to assemble you gotta assemble mm. but so it's, it's, minimal. Under, it's, under it's minimal assembly yeah yeah okay Fair it, enough. it is very very little With assembly, ball, you have to assemble some stuff too so mm-hmm. yeah and, and I, underworlds as well so yeah I, I do wonder with um with that game if COVID affected the growth of it in a negative way too much like, I know definitely, like, I haven't got to play that game as much as I want to. Yeah, neither have I. It's one I'm looking forward to getting back into. Yeah. You keep saying I that, Biron. Playing the stuff as it comes out and going, yeah. damn, I want to play this. Biron, you keep saying you're looking forward to it, but, like, who's going to win when we get to whatever normal is? Who's going to win with their choice? Something that launches right yeah. at that time. <laughs> right. <You're>, the <laughs> answer is you're all going to lose and, like, something brand new comes well, out. Well, no matter how bad, like, Mike and I might be with game hopping. We're not near where Jameson and Ryan are. Yeah. You know, and I applaud them for that. I just, I can't, I, I, with rules and learning mechanics, and then when you finally figure it out and get, not get next. good, decent. Yeah, next. I just can't, uh, I hate the feeling of always being dumb. I like to eventually feel not smart, but not dumb either. And game hopping could do that. Um, let's talk about, Board games, no models, just regular old board game. There's a billion of them out there. Um, before we get into our favorites, because we didn't want to do pros and cons the last one. I do want to talk about pros and cons. Um, I like the idea of board games way more than board games. When I go to a game store or Barnes & Noble or Target now, and you see all these cool games, some you've heard of before because they're popular, some just look cool. But then you realize, like, Maybe you could play with two people, but it needs four. And then how's it going to play? Is it complicated? Am I going to be the guy running it? Like, everyone talks about Terraforming Mars. Looks like a cool game. Then I watch people playing it in a video, and I'm like, this looks monotonous and boring as fuck. Why did it seem cool? Because I think Mars is cool. Is that why? And I'm like, I'm not going to buy it. Uh, so board games, it's like, for me, it's more of a – it's such a – it's such an example of I like the idea of it better. Like, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? I don't mind resource management games as much. So I'm, I'm okay with a lot of that. But 
I don't want a game that's going to take six hours. Yeah. That's not my thing anymore. And a lot of the games, like Scythe and some of these other ones, are just really they long look, games. It looks so cool. The concept seems cool. Um, someone I know was talking about Star Wars Rebellion. And I'm like, that'd be kind of cool. And then I like, that's, that's a long fucking game. And yeah. there's a lot into it. I'm like, I'd rather shoot yeah. arrows and have them die and roll to kill them. I'd rather, I don't know. Maybe miniature games feel like we're accomplishing things because people are dying. I don't know. But there's times in board games where I'm like, it's or either just long, long or what? So what? Or if you play a GW game, nobody dies. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll never so, let that go one of the other things like length of game is a big problem with board games but also i look at like what does the table look like because i think it's like arkham horror i've seen people play that and there's just shit everywhere yeah. they're playing <laughs> on like a four by six table and i'm like whoa no i'm out like what else do you got i uh the i got a, fr a gaming another gaming friend and the deal we struck was i bought everything for arkham horror and like forks and forks mansions but he has to store them and when we play he's got to set it up and take it down and he's like i got the wrong end of this deal and i was like i know <laughs> <laughs> i uh i was at a gen con and i saw people like in like the lobby area playing arkham horror it was like six people playing it looked like a mess like you but I'm sure they were having fun though, and I'm sure it, it's probably got fun elements to it. But oh, it, it, like it's, it's a it's it's a fun game, but it's complicated. And again, you have to have almost a game master yeah. who's handling all the cards and all of that, which is you for me. And uh, now, Eldritch Horror is so much better because it's simpler. Yeah, okay. Is that the one that's got a really good like iPad version? It's there one of is those. The iPad. There's a gaming aid. Yeah. No, you're thinking of uh, Mansions of Madness too. Both yeah. of those have like things that manage the stuff for you, mm. so it helps. But the fact that it needs an app to help yeah. you manage the game tells you something. Yeah. Side note: I'm against all of that. I don't want phones in the game. Period. I, I want phones off the table in in those kind of games because it's like to me it's a slippery slope. It's going to help us manage things. Oh, cool. Look what look who just Snapchatted me. I'm like, no, now it's all over. Not a fan of that. There's a lot of cool board games that look awesome. Like uh, I wanted to play Dead of Winter. It looked awesome. Oh, that's a good game. Like, like I got it's probably not complicated, but then I have to still something to learn. I have a feeling board games nowadays, it's almost like TV. You know, they say like TV now is better than ever, but they're not, you know, dopey, There's too much. Right. Dopey sitcom, the dumb husband lost the rent money at the track you know it's intense stuff to me that's how board games are now you have to get into a board game that you have to have a group that plays every week you figure out you get better and better and then i hear these stories from people that are like man we finally won pandemic it's been so long since we won i'm like what like like i i'd be fucking pissed after the first one if we don't we don't have a winner after that first game i'm not showing up to game two if we don't well, that's, it's a lot of these co-op games and stuff, they make they're like so purposely hard to sort of yeah. increase their value. I'm like, no, I, I don't want to do that. Like so, uh, one one of the games that's it's it's a miniature game, but also a board game would be um, Kingdom Death Monster. And people always say that uh, how hard it is. I'm like, if I'm gonna go to all the trouble of setting this up, one die roll is not gonna make me start over. I'm gonna be like, I'm ignoring that fucker and ro rolling it again. If you're playing a video game, you hit the reset button, and start yeah. over. You know, just saying. Um, I mean, I, I chose a favorite traditional board game, but I think it also blurs the lines into potentially a party game. Um, is it Blood survive. Bowl? Is it Blood Bowl? Is it Dungeon it's, Bowl? No. I, I actually thought about cheating and putting Dungeon Bowl in a different category, but I resisted. Uh, <laughs> survive. It's not your birth anymore. I don't have to stand for your shit, so. No, Survive is my traditional board game. But it's a, also a big tile game. Survive, uh, Escape from Atlantis, I think is the full name. But I love that game so much. Like I, I, anytime we went to Saul's for Underworld, I'd always force somebody to get that game out. Like somebody play this game with me. And then eventually I finally bought it myself. And so Mall Madness is not in your favorite traditional board games? No. Um, One you've played the most probably. 
I think I play Survive as much as Mole Madness. Counting uh, both zombie and non-zombie versions? Yeah, I think it's about even with Survive. But another good uh, board game, if you're looking for straight traditional, Sweet Valley High is mm. actually a pretty solid like hide-and-seek style board game. I've thought about reskinning it for the Dubinsky family. Yeah. But... What a, yeah. Uh, Mike, we still have to play Love Battle High School. I've played it. I know. You have to show me how to play because I bought it. <laughs> By the time you guys play, it's Love Battle College. Yeah. That's okay. It's less creepy then. Yeah. <laughs> and more fitting for Mike as the naughty exactly. professor. Uh, for me, it's, you know, the only board games I really like, like, have some kind of theme, almost like card games to me. Um, like, I got the Trogdor game. That's pretty fun. You know, there's a, there's a thing about it. Like, the theme isn't whoever created the board game, like, had a world in mind. And I applaud people who do that. I just, I'd rather just play a board game that's like, I get that. I know what that is. So I'm actually going to put the Buffy board game as mine because it's probably the one I have the most fun with. Um, it is co-op. And you could lose, but it's you usually win. And it's just a lot of fun if you like the show. So it's it falls under a normal board game kind of thing. You're 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 bouncing around, you're trying to do like, okay, let's there's not a lot of demon or uh, zombies over there, um, but there's vampires there, there's demons there, whatever. You're just trying to you you're trying to do things at once like a normal co-op game, but because I like the theme, I like the game. Um, those are all all those kind of games though. That's what I go for. I don't really, I can't see myself putting a normal board game on my list. Um, they all have something. Like the first game I really got into, even before Blood Bowl, was Access and Allies. That's a, that's a board game, but guess what? We know what the fuck's going on. I don't need to learn a, a world. I know what it is. So um, th for me, any board game I really like, it's got to probably come from somewhere I'm already familiar with. So during that time period, that was like the original Access and Allies. That's right. It's right. a freaking awesome game. Like, uh, that, that same time, you know what's fucked up? So I remember playing the original Axis and Allies, and then um, my, 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 I had, you actually had five guys we used to play with. We were all in junior high, and we all picked a country. It was fun, because um, we can kind of role play, in a sense, as that country. But I remember like getting towards the end of our, our road there, and playing other, we started to play Blood Bowl other things, but then we saw... Uh, the Fortress America started, it was going to come out or it came out already. And at this time, we were already at Desert Storm and we saw Saddam Hussein on the fucking cover of the box. But we saw the game was made years ago. And that was just such a fuck, like, mind fuck to us that, like, how did they, like, how, and I, <laughs> how did they know who the fuck to put on the cover of this? Like, it's pretty crazy when that, I don't remember when it came out. Mike, was that like, Fortress America mid eighties, maybe. No idea. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, I just remember that it was just like, how the fuck is Saddam Hussein on the cover when this game is old? Like we just thought that was the weirdest thing. I'm sure there's a real reason. I was like 13 or 14. So whatever, but, um, it's uh, like people ever... shortly after nine 11 that saw Rambo three for the first time. Like, Whoa, hold on. What's going on here? Yeah. Are we in <laughs> Afghanistan? You know what? I mentioned pandemic. How many people are playing pandemic right now? And I don't mean LARPing it. I mean actually playing the board game. Yeah, that was big on, like, Facebook in, like, April. It was like, oh, playing Pandemic. Right. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here's the thing. We're all LARPing it, and we're all still at level one right now. A couple of us may be advanced, but nowhere near. Nowhere near endgame. Uh, we covered all board games? Or did we miss anybody? Me. Oh, you're on? That's all right. I was going to put Talisman in there. You know, it's a simple and kind of dumb game. Uh, I never played it. I, I just had a was... lot of fun uh, taking on the final dragon naked once and suc successfully defeating it with no what upgrades. Dragon naked? Who's naked? The dragon? No, you are, because like you, if you die, you kind of start over and you have to earn equipment around the board and get powered up. But we said, "Fuck it, let's go fight the dragon without any extra equipment." Mm. That, was that cool. sounds like something you would do. Yeah. The the problem with talisman is you're like, oh, I need a three. I got a four. Yeah. So then you got to do four, and then you're you wait around, and then it's like, oh, I I oh, I rolled a two. I'm, yeah. You're, you're, it could go, and they're, they're like five hundred thousand expansions. 
Yeah. Do it, and now they're they just re-release all of them again. I saw it posted on Grindr. Yeah, Grindr has them all, yeah. yeah. I know you're looking to play Dreadfleet as well, Biron. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big Dreadfleet fan. Yeah, yeah. I figured as much. Um, Extreme, we're moving right along, much to your chagrin. Much to your motherfucking chagrin. You're like, we got to make it a three-parter. Three I mean, my it's, dick. Al it's almost like you've gone rapid fire intentionally to. Well, target. now we're sidetracked, so we do need to. <laughs> so, what are we going to do? Let's, before we get to War Game, um, let's do. Uh, since, I mean, it kind of crosses over to things, but I put in its own category um, dungeon crawl type games mm -hmm. where you're, it's co op, but you are going to different. It, it could be a dungeon, but it could also be other games like that where you're teamed up to do a thing um, does it have to be co-op it could be no it could be no because um you can't of, pick dungeon bowl well, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these games need uh, uh, a, a dm player a game master games master and a lot of them so no it doesn't have to but i like the idea of characters even if you're controlling all the characters i like characters working together to move about somewhere if that makes sense. Um, yep. Do you want to go first extreme if you have something in mind? Yeah. Yeah. Dungeon Bowl? Like Dungeon Bowl? No. It is not Dungeon Bowl. I thought about it. I considered it. It's not an option. Uh, but my two choices do have one theme in that there is no DM, but they are definitely Dungeon Crawls. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is Four Against Darkness, which is a pencil and paper, solo, old school, Dungeon crawl role playing game. Percent I know Mike is yep. good. Mm -hmm. Do you um, have a Do you have a notebook right now filled up with those? Can you show us your maps? I mean, I could if you give me a few minutes. But oh, I yeah. have like a tote with my rule book and my graph paper and my pencils and my. Are dice. they all dwarves? It, mine are all dwarves. Yes. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Figured as much. Um, but yeah, I love that game. It just reminds me of. It makes me feel like I'm a kid again, because that's the kind of crap that I did as a kid, like making up these stupid games on paper, and that definitely fits all that. Uh, the other game I chose was Arcadia Quest, which also doesn't have a DM, but is a multiplayer game with chibi-style miniatures. Uh, but there's so many cool games, cool aspects of what Cool Mini or Not did with just tiles and like it amazed me how much you could change to you have nine tiles, two sides, but by putting walls and doors in different places, you can make an infinite number of dungeons with it. And it's so cool. Love that game. Yeah. That's, um, you know, for a while I was looking at either that or super dungeon. Yeah. They had similar mm -hmm. kind of models. Um, it turns out I didn't really get into super dungeon Explorer as much as I wanted to, but it's that same kind of thing. And there's a lot of those that, what drew you to that? Was it the models and style of that that drew you to that game? Uh, the models, the style, the models, and like the play style, the, like the ease to get into and the simplicity, but at the same time, simplicity, but at the same time, complexity. Like as you advance through and get weapons and stuff. Um, the big negative for that game, I would say, you really want more than two players, and that's hard to get at sometimes. Like you really want three or four people playing well, arcade plus. Without a, a, a DM player. So you and another person, are you, does it give you rules to randomly have monsters attack you? No, so you all, is, um, is player versus everyone. So you're trying to kill the other people that are playing, but at the same time, you also have goals you're trying to achieve. Oh, so there is no co-op element at all then. No, it, you're, you're trying to kill the other guys and complete the goals at the same time. And whoever gets three first completes that mission and you can go on to the next one. Okay. So as a full campaign mode, it's a freaking awesome game. Um, the the two negatives I would say with Arcadia Quest are you really need ideally four people, but three people is good too. And it was a Kickstarter game, so you had like just tons of shit all at once that you have to get through. That's like you buy extra character packs too in that one? You can, um, and most of the time you're wasting your money because you'll never get to them. But like all the expansions and stuff, like there's so many, I don't know how many campaigns we've actually played through in my family, but there's still just tons that we've never even touched. Yeah, that, that's always the case, isn't it? Like you, the, most gamers are, have the completest 
feeling of I got to get all the expansions because what if, and then what if never comes? You, might play, you play the original and then that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Biron, uh, Valdrick, do you want me to go or do you have one? I got one. Go ahead. Is that what you're going to say? So, I, I'm going to go with <laughs> I'm going to go with Warhammer Quest. Original. Great. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah, that was, it was the only one I played to any sort of significant level. Uh, we used to play, we were between Dungeons and Dragons campaign, actually Pathfinder, uh, that Grognard Todd was running for us and we needed a break. So we played some Warhammer Quest. We modified it slightly because if I remember correct, one of the rules that stuck on me was the, um, I call it the JRPG of the 90s rule where the person who gets the final blow is the only one that gets experience points. Yeah. So we changed that to make it where they got spread around a little bit because you would end up with your barbarian would be max level or what else would be low. I think Warren Request lended itself to a lot of house rules. Yeah. yeah. I remember even before, because I played with Mike a little bit, but even before that when we played it, when it first came out, I had some friends we played it. We, right off the bat, like a few of us bought, like one guy bought the Pit Fighter, one guy had the Elf Ranger, one had um, uh, the, oh, the Troll Slayer, oh, but I remember I wanted to play a wizard, but chaos. And so I just made up rules and we all kind of, you guys cool with this? And we took the idea of healing people. Um, but instead of just healing them, I made them pay me gold every time I healed. You know, so that was my, the chaos element to it. That, that was what I remember with Warhammer Quest. Even back then, it, it wasn't balanced out of the box. The barbarian is better than everybody at everything out mm -hmm. of the box. And then you add in the bestiary or bestiary, if you will, um, and you uh, go through everything and you realize leveling up isn't balanced either. So you either have to have a DM or everybody has to be cool. Is that what you found, Biron? Yes. Anyway, it was quick for us, like, because well, this is the first time I played it and, and Todd and Adrian had played it a lot. They go, okay, here's the rules and here's how to play it. So it's fine. And we just did that from the get-go. So I've only played the modified version. Extreme, you look real bright today. Yeah, I don't know what's in my lighting today. I, oh, it's good. I, it keeps going in and out. I, I know you just turned 40 last week, but uh, you look like you're 39 and a half right now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I do what I can. Uh, Valdrick, do you have a favorite? I'll let you go first. So. Okay. It's not Dungeon Saga. Oh, it's not? No. Imperial Assault. Uh, yeah, it is. Imperial Assault. I'll tell you why it's not Dungeon Saga. Dungeon Saga is a great game. But I had to do a lot of stuff to make it fit how I want to play it. Um, and I, like, the missions in the book, I'm not doing those. I, I think they're dumb. I don't want to play those characters. I just don't like it. But I get why they're there. You got to do it. You got to have, you got to write missions. You have to. You have to write scenarios. You have to people do stuff. But because you can play it without a DM as well. Um, you don't need that. Imperial Assault is by far my favorite because it is my preferred way to enjoy Star Wars theme. Um, I'm sure I'll like Legion when I play it. Um, I, I like Star Wars video games when I play it, but like cheesy missions and objectives, we got we to gotta hit this thermal thing. You got to hit the button in this turn. Like it's, it's movie-like to me. It's these cinematic things. And there's a little role playing, but it actually plays way better if you just try to work together and win um, and don't be, well, my, my guy wouldn't help you. Hey, there's no dicks in this one, okay? We already decided no dicks. I know your guy's a Han Solo type. No, we're doing this, you have to do this, you keep him occupied, you do this. And so occasionally it suffers from the, the thing that a lot of co-op games does is one person tells everyone what to do. Mm -hmm. and I, I hate that I, and I try never to be that person. Um, but I've had friends that are that person. And sometimes, sometimes people actually want direction. Sometimes, you know, you got four people together. One knows what to do, but doesn't need help. One wants to tell them what to do. One doesn't know what to do. I mean, like, sometimes you have to have that. This game and Descent, which is sort of where it was spawned from, Descent and Imperial Star are the same game, essentially. One is Star Wars with guns. One is fantasy. Um, and Descent's a, a fine game as well. Um, it's just enough role play. Just enough where I want to choose this skill, this weapon. I'll trade you this armor. Just enough 
but the action is where it's at because it's a true dungeon crawl. And I think um, Hero of Salt is just a phenomenal game. Um, it's, it's done now. All these expansions are out. So if you want to get it, get everything now because who knows if they're ever going to redo them. But um, they might reissue it with new models because Legion models are better looking than those. But um, it, the models are fine for what they are. What they are. But it's just a fun setup. It's a game that has a lot of, um, you know, people come over to play. I need to have it set up before they come mm -hmm. because we're not starting until 8 o'clock if I have to set it up in front of them. And if, you, if people that try to play two adventures in a night, I applaud them. I don't know how they pull that off because the teardown and setup is a pain in the ass. Uh, I guess These if, have tiles that are like puzzle pieces that go together. Puzzle pieces. I guess if you don't care what's on them, you could probably get by, but I do because why would the corridor to that ship be next to grass? I, I build it like it is in the book. Because probably and, and I'm probably anal about it because I'm because you're anal in general. I am. I mm -hmm. do enjoy it, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm Greek. It's Star Wars. Like the missions are there. If I played a traditional dungeon crawl, I don't care about your missions. I'll write the missions. But when it's Star Wars, it seems like, like when you play the game, if the four of us were playing, we're regular guys. Sure, we're, you know, decent at something, but we're playing, something happens, all of a sudden, we see a fucking lightsaber through the door, Luke Skywalker helps us out. And then next game, you know, some, it, you have characters you know and love taking part in the game, but we are not them. We are the red shirts, you know, we are the other guys. And that's what I loved about it because you can do whatever you want. If you have, if you're the Imperial player, you want to have the big ATST in there, that's fine. You're going to not have 20 stormtroopers like you wanted to. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, if you like Star Wars, it's, it's, it's a great game. There's a lot of stuff because it's fantasy flight. There's a billion fucking cards, a billion weapons, billion skills. But if you have people that are into it and they'll show up every week to play, to me, it's the, the best. Um, but it's a lot of ifs. You got to have a people check. Like, party game has no ifs. Bust it out for anybody. Imperial Assault, you got to wait for the right time. Um, it's not a game that is busted out with people. Like, Biron, you might play. You kind of like Star Wars, but you also kind of don't. You might not like the game. I mean, it's, it's got those elements. So I could see someone, I played one campaign through the first one, didn't get to the other ones, like we mentioned with Extreme, have them all, but didn't get to it. So I, I would like to also uh, honorable mention uh, Pathfinder, which is Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 mm -hmm. edition. The way I enjoyed it the most was when we were crawling through a dungeon and strategic battles that we would have. I hated the role playing and all that nonsense, but it is as complex a dungeon crawl as you can get as far as character things. Yeah, I mean, the the most fun I've had playing role playing games have been when there's been some kind of uh, grid uh, combat going on. Um, and you have a DM that has all the miniatures, so you're actually fighting what you're fighting. Yes. I mean, did I ever tell you guys like when? Um, I played, I forgot what edition of Star Wars roleplay it was, but um, it wasn't, it was not West End games. It was the first time they used D20. And um, Paul Ewright made the, our, our ship. Like he goes, hey, you're going to be, because I was the pilot, the good pilot of the ship. Like, oh, I just thought it was just something you, you have written down. Mm -hmm. One day we show up, he has the fucking ship on the table. He cut out, it was like, if, if he had dot matrix printer, it would have worked out well. It would have been connected, but it was print out, taped, kind of ghetto, but cool. And it was like, like, hey, does he hear me? Like, he doesn't fucking hear you. You're in the cockpit. He's all the way at the fucking back. I was like, oh, shit. And I look, I'm like, yeah, it's 50 squares down. Of course he can't hear me. Get on the comm link. And like, that was so much fun to have that level of being into it. But it used models. It used the grid. And there's a lot of combat. A lot of combat. That's... I, I have an honorable mention as well. I just thought of this as you were talking about Star Wars Space Hulk. Mm. I think it's a phenomenal dungeon crawl game. I love Space Hulk. And you know what? I would I put it right up there too. Um, you know what I love about Space Hulk that a lot of people don't? The timer. Yes. I think um, if you play Gene Sears, fuck around. Have at it. Do whatever you want. If you're playing Space Marines, it's hard because you have, you got like one guy with the heavy flamer. You can't waste yeah. any turns. You can't blow your fucking wad in that room. I know you think it's smart to kill all those guys in one shot, but your mission is to clear that room. And then there's a timer. you got to do your turns at a certain time. Um, it's great. Um, 
it gets a little clunky at times with like the turning because those are action points, but it's kind of part of the game. I don't know of a way. I looked at it once to see if there's a way to get around that. That's kind of part of the game, how you're facing matters because if you like, I think if you see a gene stealer as a blip and they pop out, you can have them face the other way. So it helps you because they got to spend extra action to turn around. Um, Space Hulk is a phenomenal game. Have any of you ever played the big one at Adepticon? Never. Wanted to. I did. It was horrible because <laughs> it was me and Jose playing against a guy where that is the only game he plays wow. for 20 years. So it was like, all right, you're done. All right. I did, 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 and I won. I'm like, oh, that goes 10 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's like, the one thing with Space Logs that was kind of funny is the, uh, like, it always ends up being bigger like on, than a table I have. Like, mm -hmm. I thought it was big enough to set up. And I'm like, fuck. Okay, let's pretend we all come out here. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do the Pac-Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, yeah. It's all right, going one second, not the other. But it's always bigger than I thought. Um, on a related note, I'm glad it just popped in my head. What do you guys think about, I think this is a cool concept, and I do it with my version of Dungeon Saga. I call it Dungeon Hammer, which we'll, we'll talk about that. We have a Dungeon Saga episode. I really like players not seeing what's next until they get there. Do you guys like that? We oh, Yes. Yeah. It helps with the version. Todd, Todd set up the, you know, that Dwarven Forge dungeon stuff? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's kind of what I have. He had a table of it, and he had the whole thing covered with paper and only revealed when we could, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm doing with mine. Is the, is I have the 3D printed version of that. It's much cheaper. Um, mm -hmm. but I was able to get a 32 millimeter, by the way. That was, that's the better thing about 3D printer. Yeah, I got I think the 32 millimeter. It's up easy, yeah. Yeah. Um, I cover up things where the doors aren't open. I think it's – like if you have the ability to do that, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Now, there might be one adventure where I, I'm too lazy or there's too much. Where I say, you know what? You found a map at the door. Good for you. Uh, but otherwise... Yeah, we would get to that point in DD where it, it's a complex one and, and Todd would like, here's the map. Tell me what room you're in. B7. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun concept. I love the idea. Of it. It's a lot of work, though. Uh, yeah. Warhammer Quest, the original had that. Whoever had the lantern, mm -hmm. once they crossed the, to the next room, they could, they could uh, illuminate it. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, anyone else? We cut, get everything? Right. Mike, I, Mike, oh, I Mike, Mike. don't play that many, uh, like Zombicide, Black Plague is, is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I played a couple of the D and D ones, like Dragonfire, Dungeon Saga is nice, but I played the Ravenloft one. They had a lot of theme yeah, ones. Yeah, the Ravenloft on one. Raven, it was fun. Yeah, they're they're more, all, yeah, they're good. Yeah, but I get, I like the fantasy theme, so it's the theme that. Yeah. But again, I always end up being the one that runs it. That runs it, yeah. yeah. Even when I'm not the person who, uh, like when I play with some of my friends, it's his game, and then like halfway through, I end up, you know. Uh, I, I played, it was kind of the four stripe Adidas of of uh, Zombicide. It was called like Generation Z, but I ended up liking it better because mm. it cleaned up a lot of the rules. But I also liked that it was tile based, and the art was really great on it. And you played as two characters, a team of two, and so each player had two characters. Yeah. So you could use either of their best skills all around. It was a lot of fun. Was that like World War Z style? Were the zombies fast or no? No. No. Um, but noise know. was a huge part of it too, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, sh should we move on to war games or do you want to, do we want to talk about role-playing games quickly or no? We can, I have a couple I'd like to. Okay, let's do it then. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll just do mine first because um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of RPGs. I just think that there's um, – it's like it's too much work for not enough output, like not enough. I don't feel like we did anything most of the time, but the one I got into because I like 40 K was dark heresy. And I think it's a really fun game. I think that if you like 40 K um, and you have someone who likes the lore enough to create adventures, um, you are all acolytes of an inquisitor. So the, the, the games master, yes, he's the bad guy running all the bad guys, but he's also your boss. He's the Inquisitor? Yeah, he's the Inquisitor. So he wants you to investigate. And when I mentioned the thing in Star Wars, the people saw about how, hey, no one's the dick. We're Because that's because it's a dungeon crawl. We're trying to do a thing. But in Dark Heresy, I was a bounty hunter, and I was a dick. And I was allowed to be a dick. And I was allowed to fucking walk off and shoot a bunch of guys and do things on the side because it was a true role-playing game. So I think it's great. Um, I wish I would have saved. I had the original rule book. 
and um, now it's hard to get. But they did a second edition, and I never bought that. But I donated like 20 bucks to something, and they gave me all the downloads. So I do actually have all of the Dark Heresy, I think first and second, but I only really downloaded the second one because I'm sure they fixed some stuff. But I have that. I think I printed it out in my last, when I, in my last job where I just had like a printer. Like, what do you, what do you print? Nothing. Like, TPS reports. Nothing. Dark Heresy. For, Mind your business. Right. Um, I have that just in case, but it's actually a pretty fun game. I'm still not a huge fan of role-playing games, but that would be the one I would probably play because the 40K universe, you can do a lot with it if you have people that are into it. Uh, Biron, you want to go? Yeah, I think still my I – have, I have two that I would classify as my – I don't play role-playing games very much anymore. I'm not a huge fan of them. That's not where I'm at right now, but for a long time, it was my main jam. And my two favorite uh, I mentioned before was Pathfinder. Because um, when Dungeons and Dragons went the fourth edition, it got terrible. And from everything I saw about fifth and whatever the new social justice version coming out is, it's not for me. Uh, Pathfinder is basically Dungeons and Dragons 3.5, but everything fixed and taken up to the next level. Um, but again, the way we played it was a lot more of tactical miniatures combat. That's, I mean, it's the great thing about those kind of games, you can really contour it to your group, though. Yeah. <laughs> you, like in our episode of uh, famous people who play games, pachow, 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 yeah. um, you could have that group. Like, I think, um, like places I've worked, they're like, hey, we have a D&D &D group. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, I, I, do, I do Warhammer. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the other side. Like, oh, because I know how they're going to play. And no knock on I it, have a dark you, wizard in the dark right. and casting dark spells. You're going to be up till three in the morning and do nothing. Uh, and I just, I want to kill people. I'm sorry. You're going to keep track of arrows and rations. And I don't do that. I just want to fucking kill things. And yes, extreme in 40K, things do die. Not, mm -hmm. centur not centurions or terminators, but other things do die. But it's like, uh, how many arrows do you have left? I go, one more than I need at all times. Right. <laughs> um, I've got an arrow making machine. Don't you remember? I take out my 30 foot ladder. Where do you have that? It was in my adventurer's pack. <laughs> Look at me down with the minutia. Yeah. How much gold can you carry? All of it. Right. <laughs> well, and if you break it down to that too, it probably will develop into a, I'm going to fuck around then and just be funny because I'm, I'm getting irritated with the, that level of, uh, like you said, minutia. Yeah, like when Todd would say, hey, uh, we're playing today at 8. Uh, first hour or so is going to be role-playing. Go, Great, I'll show up at 9. <laughs> um, I'm getting, my guy's getting drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the bar getting wasted. Right. Uh, uh, but right, my favorite another. game is uh, Shadowrun. Oh, that's your favorite actual. Yeah, where, where you actually kind of get into role-playing. Because for some reason, it's near future, so you kind of can think of ways to tackle problems that that seem normal to you and also there's a little bit of that you can be a dick and do stuff on the side yeah. um i i just think Shadowrun is i love the cyberpunk aesthetic and i love that they bring in elves and dwarves and everything like that and um, you could be beer on in there you can i i usually played a i'm gonna say this very carefully i played a rigor <laughs> A rigger in uh, Shadowrun is someone who uses drones. So you're, you're rigging machines. Right. I played a dwarven rigger, and it was a lot of fun. Nice. Did you have any injuries that stuck with you for a while? <laughs> any um, rigger, riggering injuries? <laughs> you, I don't say that word fast, but that is, I'm not making it up. And it took okay. place in uh, New Seattle. It reminded me of Buck Rogers was in New Boston. Yeah, it's, they always just put the word new. Yeah. Always, always so was it New New York? Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's also one of those books where I, I enjoy just reading the source books. Well, maybe we'll play next episode via Zoom. Just yep. kidding. Uh, Valdrick, <laughs> what is your uh, favorite? The probably the game I had the most fun with, although I would never play it now, is Champions. Super role playing game. Okay, I've heard good things about. I love. Yeah. Is that a license? A license one or like generic superhero? A generic superheroes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was. 
and it 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 we just had a great time playing it uh my little secret was the first few sessions i would just throw a bunch of shit out there and just see what stuck and they never knew that that wasn't my plan i just whatever characters whatever villains they had chemistry with or whatever i kind of you know made that the story that's the, that's the best way though and you as a as a dm i mean you adapting is the best way if oh you, yeah yeah you just have you gotta go with it whatever and, the players like that's what you should go down not like course. i want to do this yeah. Yeah. yeah you can make them pay for something dumb but you have yeah. to go with it you know yeah you know? now one of back in the day like role-playing games especially in high school it's all i could afford to play because miniature games at that time was BattleTech, and that was too expensive for me buying four max um we played a game called twilight 2000 which was oh yeah of, it was a World War Three esque Cold War era game, and a lot of it took place in Poland. And people in high school are really dumb, including myself, because we were like, "All right, I took seventeen AK forty seven rounds to the head. I'm still okay." Like we did not do that game right. You mean you were cheating? Not on purpose. Oh, I used to cheat when we played it. Crooked at games way into the night, and I get wasted because I. It was zonked out of my mind. I can see. Yeah. There was a game, so when I used to um, hang out at this comic store, it was a Graham Crackers, Glendale Heights, and we were playing other games. I even played Hero Clicks, whatever. But there were some guys playing a WWF role playing game, and it always sounded like they were having a blast. And I was always secretly jealous because I wanted to play that, but I couldn't leave my group to, to do that. But I think, I don't think they were real wrestlers. And maybe you can look it up and see what, like, I think it was a, that same thing where, like this was the era of Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were the, were the top guys. Like they were there and you were you, you know? So I think it was like, you're trying to climb the ranks, but you're a, a mid card or whatever. And they always sound like they were having so much fun. And it was, I never got to play. But it was, I think it was called, it might've called, called superstars. I could be wrong though. But, so. The, uh, the Twilight 2000, there's actually a, a Kickstarter right now that they're, 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 updating it whatnot but it's still set in the year 2000 mm -hmm. so the which far future i no. was in the future but now it's kind of a retro post-apocalyptic game that they're, they're raising it as i always wonder like when you see like movies and whatever like we're gonna watch escape from new york or something like wait what happened in 97 we all like it seemed like well like happened. like cyber like like yeah, uh, cyberpunk. cyberpunk it's like 2020 it's in 2020 and our computers can fit in the back of our cars it's also fucked up that all these things are supposed to happen in the future we don't have yet this is more powerful than anything anything anyone ever anything they of. could come up with yes yeah, right. yeah i love it like no flying cars no flying cars no this stuff but i mean you didn't you didn't say this Fucking there's a device in your hand that has access to all the knowledge in the world <laughs> All the knowledge in the world, and what do we do? Watch porn. Watch porn. Yeah, <laughs> you see Lee Bob at Apple Store for a cracked version. Um, final game type: Extreme. Is this correct, based on your stats? War game. I, I noticed you skipped over role playing game for me. Because we assume oh, you should play Vampire the Masquerade at the mall. No, I'm, the I'm, I'm sorry. You were uh, your head I was down. No, I thought you fell asleep. Yeah, I have nothing to offer. I don't like role playing game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, moving on to the final one. Extreme, hold on. If there was a dwarf role-playing game. I backed that on Kickstarter. It never happened. Okay. I got screwed. You know what I backed and I ended up trading at Todd's was the orc one. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't role-playing. That was more dungeon crawl. Never mind. The um, plunder. Yeah, plunder, I remember plunder that, yeah. Something. But, yeah. All right, well, we're going to skip you then, Extreme, okay? All right, I'm good. I I think we've covered all of our game types. Yes, I know there's many others. Oh, well. It's what we're, we want to I talk will about. say one thing uh, about role-playing games. One of my favorite systems, modern systems, stripped-down ones, is called the Apocalypse Engine. And you'll, 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 get, you'll recognize this. You roll 2d6. If you roll a 6 or less, it's a failure. A 7, 8, 9 is a partial success. Oh. Yeah, so so it's, it's the technical... It, Basically, no bulls dice. Did, sure did, did, did Brent Spivey write that one? What did Brent Spivey write those rules? 
No, I think no. This game was out before uh, Techno Bowl, which is why when I learned about Techno Bowl, I was like, "Oh, that's the Apocalypse Engine." Yeah, I, I totally understand this. So I, I wonder if he because he carried over stuff from other games he wrote, like Osprey style, were just straight up yeah. rule books. And I didn't know if that was a a common uh, way to do successes. You know, it it, it it's become that way because it's it's yeah, mathematically it's sound, like probably. independent role playing game system. Yeah. Or the you know all all that stuff. It's it's a very very popular thing. Well, you just put different skins on it. My next game will use only D thirteens. So yes. <laughs> start you guys start working on the math now. You guys are going to be my math guys. Make sure everything uh, 50, 50. D thirteens. Um, okay, final game topic: war games, battle games. This whole hobby is called war gaming as default. We all know not all war gaming is war games. But this time, we're actually going to talk about war games. Uh, would you like to play a game? Yes. Global thermonuclear war. Whoa. And we got a cat there, too. Yep. Uh, I know mine, and I know Baron's. Mm -hmm. I, no, I think I know Baron's. I might not. No, you probably uh, do. Uh, I'm going to guess, just for funsies, I'm going to guess Mike's is War Master. Favorite war game? Yeah. War game, yeah. No, Warmaster it had some it had some problems. Warmaster Ancient fixed a lot of that, but no one's playing that. So I'm gonna guess Extreme's favorite war game is whew, this is a tough one. Um, I know what it's not. It's not <laughs> Warhammer forty thousand. It's not. It's not, no. Uh Kings of War. That is my choice. Yeah, mine too. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about Kings of War. You guys go first. Uh, Kings of War is great because it plays, you get the full feel of a war game, but it plays like a skirmish game because you're playing with just trays of stats, basically. It's like um, a skirmish game with giant bases. Sometimes yeah, you play with post-it notes. Yeah. I mean, I don't, but yeah, you could. Uh, so I like the fact that you sit at the table, you get the visual of the big battle, but when you're actually playing the game, you don't get all the headache of the big battle. It still feels manageable. Got some good streamlined things about it. I like that. Um, is it like counterattack? You get charged, you bounce back and you go again kind of thing. Like it's got some of that. It sometimes could get bogged down in like just the fucking schmas in the middle of the table. Yeah, 60 zombies, 60 zombies, but that's kind of how I'm playing them. Um, it's a pretty smooth system. Um, I've got a medal that I won at Adepticon, and I believe I won NachoCon Kings of War as well. Yes, you did. So The medal at Adepticon that we won. I was going to say, you shared that medal with... No, they each got a medal. We each got one. You know, and... <laughs> Like, it's great because as we drove back from that, we didn't fight in the car. Like, right. the opponents we squashed. You can't land that flyer there. <laughs> um, we'll talk about that real quick. There was all these extra rules. Uh, who, who ran this? Todd. Todd, right? No. Was it Todd or was it? Yeah, it no, was it Todd. Was Todd. It was Todd, Todd ran it. Where we, so there was a, a game where we weren't allowed to talk to each other. And so it's a lot. It's a lot of mm, mm, mm stuff, and um, I don't know. We were uh, we were in, in sync enough to know what we were doing. We didn't have any no. giant fucking rubber birds to plop down though. We we had normal models and normal things we were doing. Extreme. You had all the. Um, uh, you had the Skylanders. Oh, Skylander guy. Yeah, all the golems. Hogs. I think it was like two, three turns into the game. I accidentally started talking to you. So then we were just like, fuck it. We're just going to yeah. talk to each other and lose those bonus points. But our opponents attempted to keep those bonus points. And that was our flaw. Yeah. I don't even know if that was an accident. I think we might have actually said, fuck it. Because we saw it was like five points, whatever it was. And we really wanted to say, no, no, like you charge them and I'll flank them. Like we wanted to talk. Fuck it. Like but, I don't even think it was on accident. The difference between our team and the team that we were playing was that both of us were actually playing. The team we were playing, there's really just one, one brain person. working. Yeah. yeah. One, one, sh one showrunner, if you will. Now, Mike yeah. and I played together in that, and we, 
we made a point of breaking those special rules in the first second of every game. Yeah, first second. Game I started. Over Todd Boom. Look. Wasn't one of them you can't go to the other side of the table or something? Or no? Uh, one was you couldn't touch your another player's model. Which right? we don't normally do anyway. Yeah. I uh, thought one was you couldn't leave your side. And I'm like, hey, listen, I got sausage arms. No, I don't. But, you know. <laughs> if you I could say sage arms? If, if I couldn't reach, like, oh, you can't reach. Like, well, guess I'm not going to go in that corner. You're safe there. Yeah. Um, Mike, I want you, your take on Kings of War. I know you like the game a lot. Yeah. Uh, most of the things that uh, Extreme said, uh, again, very smooth miniature set. Our miniature rules, uh, I like the factions. They're generic enough so that dwarves are dwarves and whatever. But they do have some uniqueness to them. Uh, I like the fact that during my turn, I'm rolling all the dice. It moves very, very quickly. And, and it plays. it's designed to be played in two hours. And I really appreciate that. Yeah. One of the things I, I don't like about it, I like a lot about it, but I don't I don't like the the um, not what I don't know what you're going to call it not cat and mouse but oh the, who's going to let themselves get charged you know, first? everyone's just kind of playing real weak you know they're playing like well I'm not going to let you I'm going to move charged. this much I'm right. still out of your double I don't, know. I don't really like that that much I don't mind some of it like you know like take two bases or trays angle them you're going to have to pick one so I'm going to flank the other I like that um, but I don't like the the cat and mouse stuff like pussyfooting around I also really don't like I remember I played Joe Neat at Adepticon like um, a day before the event. And it was like Ronnie was hanging out, was watching. And there's a, I don't know if it's still in the rules, Mike, you could correct me, but using not loopholes, but using things to your advantage. Like, well, if I charge you here, you, you have to slide your base over just because that's the way it works. And then by doing that, you fuck yourself over there. Like he would, he would charge me at certain angles on the table based on the terrain, knowing yeah. I have to slide yeah. a certain way over. And I thought that's like, it's, to me, that seems dumb. It seems not in the spirit of the rules that you're taking out. Well, if this happens, just slide over one inch. And I forgot what that was called, but you, you did that. And then. Yeah, because when you even up, like like 90% of your, your, your tray would be, like you would never charge someone through the woods. You would expect you to come out. Yeah, that's still. Yeah. And I don't mind closing the door, that whole thing, but like, almost intentionally having a non uh, symmetrical charge, knowing my whole unit had to move over, if that made yeah. sense. So it wasn't just him sliding over, my guy slid over and that uncovered some guys I was screening or something. And I get that's probably a tactic. I just didn't like it. I thought it wasn't in the spirit of the game, but that's, you know, I'm, not, I'm probably not explaining it right, but it was- No, I know exactly what you're talking about. It, the, the, well, the, the defenders would say, you're using the train to your advantage. Yeah. But some of it's like, well, if charging through trees is going to, you know, if only 10% of my guys are going to do that, the whole unit's going to suffer. For yeah. It. And then it just, I, I just hated that. Like, so he got corner to corner almost, but then I had to shift. Yeah. I'm like, why the fuck do I have to shift? It's not my fault. You couldn't connect all the way, but then by me shifting, all my guys back there were now open. Yeah. Like, why would my guys do that? And so I, I know it's part of the game. Anybody, but, that was there was some turnoffs of it. I liked a lot about Kings of War, and I think it's a good game. I just don't think it's a great game. But that's you're gonna see that in every rank and flank game. That. You're right. You're you're totally right. That even happened in uh, um, I was playing Game of Thrones for a little bit, which is using trays. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which, yeah, which like yeah. That too. So you're right. Rank and flank games will have that. Yeah. We'll and have so it. Brought it up. I will say, War Master gave more than any other game I've ever played gave me that feel of. This is an army, you know. That, well, you think it's, war or Warhammer, it's still well. Most not of that the many games, people, those games mostly you're playing an excerpt of a, yeah. like a like a scene in a movie with a battle. You're yeah. playing that scene. You're not playing the battle. Yeah. But War Master now, yeah, true or like, false? You got the whole true or false? I heard a rumor you're working on a Vor uh, uh, variant called Vor Master. <laughs> Not true? I wish, but no. Um, Is that about women eating you? Yes. <laughs> uh, so we'll, have, we'll probably have a Kings of War episode, so we'll skip talking about that more. Biron, what is your favorite battle game? 
Uh, Warhammer 40,000. Okay. I thought it might have been Legion. I was close on those two. Uh, right now, I prefer to play Legion, but overall, just by the sheer investment of time and money, yeah. 40K. Yeah. Mine is also 40K, obviously. So, um, Extreme, on time? Did we rapid fire this shit enough for you? We did. It we is 9 it. o'clock exactly. It's not your birthday. I don't care about your feelings this episode. But you did it. It was Hulk. Wait, what? You did it. You met your goal. I did it. A winner is me. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Follow at Zlurpcast. Join the discussion. Facebook group called Zlurpcast Discussion. Uh, get some stuff. Get some merch. We don't have anything on today, but there's all kinds of stuff. T-shirts, stickers, all that. Zlurpcast.net. We get a tiny little, tiny little piece of the action. And of course, social media. Tell your friends, like this, subscribe. Tell your friends that, you know, we've got, I expected to have 3,000 subscribers by now. We have um, no way to hear that. Um, but at 1,000, we said Biron does a pantsless episode. We haven't brought that up in a while. Mm -hmm. That's still going to happen. We got to get to 1,000. So, oh, we forgot to do the thing. Yeah. Just lurk on that sub button. Boom, boom, boom. And um, see you next time. Side wipe. Brought to you by Zombie. Eat flesh.